Right, now we've got some theory out of the way, we can start to look at the actual protocols you need to know, which fall under this category of TCP IP. But this suggests there's only two protocols operating in this protocol suite, the transmission control protocol and the internet protocol. This isn't true, it's a whole stack of protocols, each operating in different layers as we've talked about. Um, so let's move on to the first one we're going to talk about, which is Ethernet. And this is not just one protocol, this is a family of protocols, so hence for the plural uh, at the end here. And it's standardised, so it's a, it's a worldwide agreed standard that all the protocols in this family operate in the same way. And these related protocols describe how devices on the same network segment first format data, so put it in the correct format and then actually transmit it. It's on the same network segment i.e. I mean, you, you would have used Ethernet cables, it's a, it's a local kind of connection. Slightly confusingly, what we've called data packets are called frames when we're talking of the link layer. Often, I'm sure we'll get away with just calling packets, but frames is the term you'll come across when you're talking about link layer protocols, as Ethernet is, Ethernet works in the link layer, and yeah, like I say, it's just a, another word for the same thing. Um, so be aware. Um, this is what an Ethernet cable looks like, not like you haven't seen it before. And this is usually twisted pair cables made of copper. So it looks a bit like this. You can see we've got four twisted copper cables. And the reason they're twisted together is to cancel out this electromagnetic interference. Another group of protocols you should be very familiar with is Wi-Fi. Uh, again, standardised family of protocols. And VR stands for registered trademark. This is just the brand term. So the generic term is for what Wi-Fi is, is a, a WLAN, a, a, a wireless local area network, and in some languages I think that's what they use for Wi-Fi as the word anyway. So this is more kind of a branding of Wi-Fi, and it's just for standardised family protocol. So you could communicate with a different frequency, Wi-Fi uses just a band of frequencies, but we don't because it, it wouldn't be effective. When you go abroad, it's not like they're using a different kind of Wi-Fi, it's exactly the same. So stating the obvious a bit, but wireless transmission uses radio waves travelling through the air. So radio waves are a type of electromagnetic waves, just a category of them, as you probably know, and they're categorised based on the frequency, so radio waves are just a section of this frequency spectrum, as you would have seen in physics. And so you can have different frequencies of waves, as you know. So the Wi-Fi isn't just one specific frequency, because you'd get loads of clashes. Instead you have channels, and a channel represents a small frequency range, so a very small range of frequencies, and usually designate it with a number. So we've got a network here, these I think are meant to be three different routers, or wireless routers, each broadcasting at different channels, labelled 1 to 12, and this is just representing a small range of frequencies. So you can see here the blue one um, is primarily broadcasting on channel 11, but due to the nature of waves it kind of spreads out into other channels as well. Whereas you've got two routers here trying to do it on one single channel. Again, they spread out, but they're kind of on top of each other, so you have this kind of collision. So when these channels overlap, it causes this interference for collision, and so the frequencies need to be spaced out. So maybe if you've got very slow Wi-Fi, it might be because you've got devices trying to communicate on the same channel, whereas you can kind of program it to uh, operate different frequency channels. So all of these would be, 1 to 12 would be considered Wi-Fi. Um, these are just a range of frequencies, and, and within that you have a smaller range of frequencies being a channel. Data is encrypted by one of the protocols in this family called WPA, uh, Wi-Fi Protected Access, and then it's been upgraded to WPA2, and they're just security protocols that encrypt the data, so um, you would have covered encryption and just scrambles up the data so people can't just read it without uh, decrypting it first. Mostly to preempt a potential exam question, let's now talk about Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi's pros and cons versus wired connections. So the obvious ones first, you can do, you can connect remotely on Wi-Fi, and so you can move freely around. It's very versatile. It's cheap setup comparatively, less disruption. You don't have to lay loads of wires. Doesn't it's not awkward in that way. It's just one box sitting in your house if it's a, a wireless network in your home. Uh, it's very easy to expand, it, you know, when you buy a new phone you just connect to your Wi-Fi network, it's very, very easy. You don't have to buy like a switch or something in order to extend your Ethernet network, it's very easy with wireless. However, you can suffer from interferences we talked about with the conflicting channels, when they kind of overlap, uh, waves spread out, just, just waves nature, and so you can get interference that way. Also, as you can attest, signal quality degrades very fast, Wi-Fi has only got a limited range in it drops off very quickly due to just the properties of waves and you know it's, it's easily blocked if you live in an old house which has got loads of stone walls for example your router will struggle to get through if you live in a section of a house that's far away from your router you might not have the best signal quality so that's um, different to wired, wired is usually slightly better so both of these lead to Wi-Fi being less stable and less reliable than wired transmissions
wireless is generally slower than wired connections anyway in terms of latency in terms of speed and they're more vulnerable of course to hacking so uh, unauthorized access because anyone can um, capture radio waves you can connect to people's networks they've got passwords of course and as we talked about there's a little bit of encryption too but it's a lot more a lot more vulnerable than wired connections